Hey there, beautiful people. Today, I'm gonna to be creating collage art on my iPad. Collage art is a really fun way to combine existing images from the internet, magazines, scraps of paper, and other forms of media into one new and unique image. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be making today, but I wanna share with you my process and how I create collage art and share a few tips along the way that will hopefully be helpful and inspiring for you to go out and create some collage art of your own. You don't need a crazy powerful iPad. In fact, everything I'm gonna do today is gonna be made on my iPad mini six. So let's get into it. All right, so today we are going to be making some collage art inside of Procreate. This is something I do quite a bit um, something I really enjoy doing, um, for example, you know, stuff like this, um, you know, just taking different photos and sort of piecing them together to create a new work of art is just something I really enjoy doing. So today we're going to make one and you guys are just going to kind of follow along as I create one. I don't really have any idea what I'm going to be making but uh that's sort of the fun of it so uh starting off i guess i should say um i'm making a canvas that's uh, 1080 by 1920 um because i'll probably post this to my instagram story and this is like the maxed um resolution for an instagram story the the best ratio for an instagram story so uh, when I start out, I like to start with a blank canvas and then I'll basically go into um, this file path that I have created specifically for my collage art. This is a place where I save um, a lot of like my collection of um, just various scraps from like old magazines or stuff I found on the internet that I really like. Um, and I just sort of use this stuff to create uh, different pieces. So uh, let's see, we got this girl. Actually, I actually kind of like this. Um, I haven't used this one yet, so maybe we'll use her. So uh, I just went and I dropped this file in and I want to remove her from the background. And there are a couple of ways that we can do this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just sort of use the eraser tool and just start removing the background. And what I like to do is just get my brush to like a nice size and then I'll sort of just like just start tracing the outside of her body. I know that I want to remove her from the background, so I just sort of like go in and start cropping around her. And this is kind of what you would do anyways if you were creating this with like an actual um, an actual like magazine print you would go in and just sort of cut this stuff out by hand either using like an exacto knife or scissors. This is kind of nice it's like sort of doing that same process but like in a digital format. So yeah, we're just gonna go all the way around her body, sort of isolate her from the background. There are like, there are a ton of easier ways to do this sort of thing, um, especially in Photoshop. It would be, you know, probably like, probably just a one click sort of thing, but I actually enjoy the process of this part of it. I don't know, it's sort of like therapeutic for me, I suppose. So yeah, we're just gonna continue to like work our way around the body. Um, do I want those books to be in there? The books are actually kind of cool. I might, I might go ahead and leave the books in. I feel like that adds another like sort of fun element. So we're just gonna continue working our way around. 
And you can do this same thing with um, any image or object. Uh, the idea is basically the same. Um, you're just going in and sort of selecting what you want to keep in the image. And I'll show you why this part is helpful in just a second. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, the reason that I like doing it this way is because it sort of, it sort of keeps those Im imperfections. Like if you were to actually do this with scissors, like you may not, it's not as, it's not a, it doesn't feel as like digital as it would if I were to do this in, in, um, Photoshop. Photoshop can sometimes like make it a little too smooth looking, whereas this sort of retains that like cut out quality. So now that I've gone, gone all the way around her uh, and used the eraser tool to sort of like isolate her, I'm gonna just like increase the brush size and now I can be a little more loose in erasing the background. That outline was just to sort of give myself um, a little bit of bleed, a little bit of wiggle room to go in and, and remove her a little quicker now. So now I'm just sort of erasing everything around her. We'll just continue to do this all the way around. And like I said, I really enjoy this part, actually. It sort of feels like coloring like a coloring book or something. And there is a way to um, sort of select a subject um, inside of Procreate. Like I said, there are easier ways to do this inside Photoshop, um, but sometimes depending on the image, uh, especially some of the more like complicated images, this can get a little tr more tricky. That's sort of why I like doing it this way. I can be like very specific about what I want to include and exclude from the image. So this is just sort of the way I do it. But I do have um, images that I've saved that are already isolated from the background. So uh, yeah, that's it. So we're pretty much done with that. Now our girl is completely isolated from the background and we can sort of like resize her however we want. And if we create a new layer, drop it behind her, you can see now um, if I just switch to a different brush, make it a color that you guys can see. Now we can actually like draw behind her because she's isolated from the background. So now we can sort of do whatever we want. So uh, now typically what I like to do is once I have a subject, I sort of start to like build my other collage um, assets around her. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll sort of like just peruse through my catalog of images and try and just find something that I feel like sort of fits. Um, one of the things that I really like to do is um, include an image of a butterfly. Um, I'm not really sh sure why, this is just something I, I enjoy doing. So I'm gonna go into my animals, insects and butterflies. And I have a few different butterflies sort of isolated from their background already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one. And I sort of like covering, I always, for some reason, like covering the eyes of my subject with a butterfly. I'm not really, sh again, I'm not really sure why. It's just something I kind of like doing. And since her head is sort of like turned at um turned at a, like a bit of an angle what i'll actually do is distort this a little bit and i'll just drop these corners to kind of make it that might be a little too much just to make it look like it's like skewed just a little i might bring this in something like that 
The way it looks like it's on her face a little more. It's just a matter of like fine tuning and adjusting it. Something sort of like that. It's kind of cool. Now, since she's actually in a yellow dress and the butterfly is yellow, what I'm going to do is go into this butterfly layer. I'm going to click on this icon over here, and I'm actually going to change the hue and brightness so that I can make the butterfly a different color. I don't really, well, I could make it sort of the same color as the dress, and that's kind of cool. Like if it was like something sort of like that. But what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it, since she has such a yellow dress on, I'm actually going to make it more of a blue color to kind of help that yellow pop. So maybe something like that. Um, there. And I kind of want to match the um, the brightness of the photo as well. Like, obviously, I don't want to make it too bright. I don't want to make it too dark. So I'm kind of like looking at the shadows of her photo and sort of the highlights and just trying to make it to where it feels like it's sort of part of the same image. So maybe somewhere in there. There, now it kind of looks like the butterflies on her face. Um, another thing that I can do to kind of help like sell that is to create another layer beneath the butterfly. And what I'll do is using maybe like a softer, softer brush, maybe something like this. Um, I can start to build sort of like a shadow beneath the butterfly. And what, so another thing I could do, um, just to sh sort of show you guys, I could actually duplicate this layer, um, take the butterfly, turn the brightness all the way down, and then actually use that layer beneath as sort of a shadow, um, which actually works pretty well in this case. So I might do that. So again, I, I copied the butterfly layer I duplicated it, I took the butterfly beneath it, and then I just dropped the brightness down all the way so it just became like a solid black fill. And then what I'll do is I'll go into this layer, I'll drop the opacity quite a bit, maybe something like that, and then I can even put it on multiply so it kind of like picks up the color beneath and starts to look more like a shadow. So sort of like that. And that kind of helps like sell even more that the butterfly is sort of sitting on top of her face, um, which looks really nice now. So um, when doing this collage stuff, you kind of want to like look at your subject, sort of see what it is they're doing, and then try and like build around it so that it sort of feels like one cohesive piece. Now, since this character, actually, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take all these and I'm going to group them together. So now when I move her, the butterfly moves with her. That way we don't lose where the butterfly is positioned and everything. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shrink her just a little bit. I'm going to move her up. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing all of this on an iPad mini, so I apologize if it's a little hard to see right now. Um, I actually, I should have done a screen recording of this. I will start a screen recording now. That way, moving forward, it's easier for you to see what I'm doing because I can sort of switch between the two. So once the screen recording starts, I can kind of show you. Um, Basically what I'm going to do and what I'm thinking is I'm going to make her a little smaller and I want to put her actually standing. I want to have her like actually standing on something. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to include maybe a planet. Uh, here we go. Okay. So maybe we put her on something like the moon. That might be kind of cool. 
we'll see. And a lot of this is very much like trial and error. Like you may, you may do something or like position something a certain way. And, you know, the beautiful thing about procreate is that you can just undo it. If you don't like it, start over. Um, it doesn't have to be like a permanent thing. Like, I'm not sure how much I like this. Hmm. Like if she didn't have the books here, so the issue that I'm having, if we didn't have the books, this would look pretty cool because it would look like she's just standing on the planet, but I do kind of want to incorporate the books and I don't really like how it looks if she's like here. So... What I think I might do is not do the planet. Instead, let's try. Hmm. Maybe we'll just place her on some sort of like. So I have these. Um, I have these like texture texture. So maybe we'll put her on some sort of document. So maybe like this guy, for instance, what we can do is, so we can take this, it's sort of just like a scanned in invoice um, for like British Petrol for British Petroleum Company. Um, we can take this invoice, I'm gonna place it behind her and then I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with the butterfly. We're basically gonna take the, um, we're gonna take this and we're just gonna distort it. So we're gonna make it look like it's almost, like she's standing on it. So we're gonna change the perspective a little bit. So sort of something like this. Sorry, I'm sort of like problem solving this as I'm creating it, so I apologize, but sort of seeing my my brain work as I'm doing it here. And I don't know that my brain works at fast speed, but okay. So something sort of like that. And then what I might actually do is above this layer, create a little bit of a shadow, sort of like I was going to do with the butterfly. And these are just like very small, very subtle things that you can do to sort of like help the whole piece kind of come together so that it feels like, all, like one intentional image. Man, I don't know if I like that brush either. I'm not doing a good job selecting brushes today. Let's see, maybe I just need like a, here we go. This might be the move, yeah. I think this is more what I was looking for, potentially. I just want like a subtle shadow. Same thing, we're gonna drop the opacity a lot. Might be fine, we're not gonna fixate on it too much. Just like a very soft shadow. So it sort of sells that she's like actually standing there. And actually this would be more like, she'd probably cast a bigger shadow than that. So sort of like that. Yeah. Okay. So I like that she's actually like drinking out of this, what I'm assuming is like a juice box sort of thing. But um, maybe instead of it being a ju juice box, we can make it something else. Um, maybe, that may, you know, we were thinking about using the moon earlier. Maybe she's drinking out of the moon. You know, let's, I don't know, let's try it. 
So what we're going to do is go back to that moon asset. I think it was in photos and in my landscapes. So here we go. I'm going to drop the moon in. I want to place the moon above her. And this one's going to be a little tricky just because she, you know, her hands are there. She's got sort of a lot happening. So let me sort of think about this. And this, you know, totally, again, may or may not work, but it's the fun of trying. So we're going to drop the opacity down quite a bit. Okay, and I can already kind of see like some issues we're going to have with this. Um, it would be nice if her hand was coming up a little more, so let's try and see if we can get away with it being a little smaller. Maybe we do something like that. Problem is I kind of need to, it to cover the corner of that juice box, but let's just see what happens. Let's give it a try. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this set like 60 opacity, put the opacity down to about 60. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna create a clipping mask, or sorry, not a clipping mask, a, um, what am I looking for? A mask, okay? And the way a mask works is basically, um, it creates this like white layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, I have this brush that I made. This is like a very, um, it's almost like a vectored line. Like it's a very straight line. Um, and I use this a lot for like cutting stuff out um, because it creates like a very smooth straight line. Um, I'm going to drop the color all the way to black because basically what it does is when I draw on this white layer, it's going to remove whatever I draw in black. So now if we look back at this clipping mask, or at this mask, everything in black is now removed from the moon layer. So I'm gonna undo that real quick, just so we can sort of see it happen again. So we just have the mask on top, and then whenever I draw a line, it's creating a layer mask, which is removing from the moon image. So the reason we're doing this is because I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove the areas that are her fingers. So it looks like she's actually holding the moon. So for example, she's got a finger here. So we're just going to kind of create that. It looks like she has a finger here. It's a little hard to see. We'll have to like double check it. Looks like she has another finger here. And then possibly one here is what it sort of looks like. Her hand looks a little wonky, but I think that's correct. And then it looks like this finger sort of comes here like that. Or not, that might actually be behind. Okay. So essentially what we've done now is if we turn the opacity of the moon back up, now it looks like she's kind of holding that moon and drinking from it with the straw. The only issue is this little guy right here. So what I'm actually gonna do to resolve that is I'm gonna sort of blend it out. And the way I'm gonna do that is by creating a new layer above her layer and what we're going to do is we're just going to like color pick this area right here. So I'm going to grab that color that's part of the shadow of her hair. And we're just going to kind of like paint over it a little bit. We'll do the same thing kind of with the area here. This is, you know, part of her dress. So we'll kind of like that. And same thing here, I'm going to grab like the color of her dress and we're just going to kind of like paint this in to kind of help like. And you know, it's not perfect, but we've kind of removed it, you know, once you're zoomed out, you can't really tell and I'm just going to kind of go in and fix some of these spots. Mix the color a little. I'm going to grab color from over here. Can 
even make the brush a little smaller. We're just sort of mixing in these colors to kind of help sell the idea that this is just now her like hair sort her hair shadow sort of continued. So if we go out, the corner of that ju juice box is kind of gone, right? We can't really see it. I might fix her dress just a little. Sort of put some of this orange back in. Some of this lighter yellow. Sculpt her hair a little more. Okay, it's not perfect, but you know, you get the idea. If you didn't know that I did it, you probably wouldn't know. So uh, cool, so she's uh, drinking from the moon, uh, you know, that moon juice. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now, another thing that I sort of like to do is I like to create um, I sort of like leading lines. So obviously she's sort of the subject of this image. She's like what I want people to sort of like look at when they first uh, view the image. So what I like to do is add something that sort of like leads the eye or leads the viewer into that area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to my textures and ephemera. I'm gonna do like this diagrams and blueprint. Um, and we're just going to select one of these diagrams. I'm thinking maybe, maybe even just something like this, um, would really help like draw into that facial area. So what I actually might do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna group her with everything. Okay, so I gotta step back a little bit here. I accidentally dropped this layer inside that group. So we're just gonna pull that out and we are going to add these two layers. So this is the, um, the little scanned in document below her feet and her shadow, we're gonna go ahead and drop that in her layer. So now when I move her, when I move that group, it should move everything. And we're actually just gonna move this down. I'm gonna make this kind of like the bottom of the piece. And now I'm gonna have to delete this cause I dropped it into place and it's gonna crop out the top of that image. So we're gonna drop it back in and now, like I said, I sort of want her face to be the like focal point. So we're gonna do that. That way she's kind of the center and you sort of have those, you sort of have these like lines around her sort of like leading into her face. Like all these lines are kind of like pointing into her face. All these words are kind of going into her face. And we're gonna drop that behind her and I might just bump it over a little so that it feels very like centered and kind of balanced. So something, these are, I'm just making like very tiny movements and adjustments, maybe something like that. So that's feeling pretty good. And now we have all this like sort of negative white space happening up here. And I don't really like that. I like for everything to sort of feel like framed in and like grounded a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in another uh, sort of like texture. And I like to add in these like um, scrap, like sheets of paper that have been scanned in. Now she has a yellow dress. So I think maybe like a blue would really help it pop sort of like the butterfly. So what I'm gonna kind of do is just sort of use this as a frame and I'm going to drop that even below that layer, but I'm going to bump this. I might actually stretch it up a little. There we go. There. Now that's like sort of feeling like everything is kind of like framed and sort of has like, you know, these like guiding lines. It doesn't feel like stuff is just sort of like out there floating. 
which is cool. That's feeling pretty good. Um, you know, I, I kind of feel like maybe there's too much blue happening here. So another thing I could do is, you know, I, I could insert like another small sheet of paper um, to kind of like break up that space. And I like to sort of do stuff like this sometimes because I'll kind of use like this area to like write in my own stuff or maybe like draw my own like little things, have my own sort of like messaging in there. So I'm thinking maybe something sort of like that. Might go a little bigger. We might do something like that. And then I might even, I might even add in another little sheet. Let's see, do I have another sheet of torn paper? Yeah, I might do this, another little sheet of torn paper and just sort of like break it up even more, maybe something like that. And again, I'm always thinking about like how these elements sort of like lead into other elements. Like if I angle it like this, you sort of have this line sort of leading to her face. You always want to have objects that sort of like lead the eye, lead the viewer into like what's most important. Because the thing is with collage art, um, I can show you um, some other ex examples real quick. Like collage art can get very chaotic um, very quickly, you know, because there's so much going on. Um, um, here's another example like I started with the head of this statue but using the the rays coming from the statue's eyes the rays sort of focus on um, these two birds kind of help like lead the viewers eyes in sort of a literal way to the subject of this piece um, another one would be perhaps like um, I don't know if I have another good example here. Uh, the, here's one, um, you know, using the camera and these like lines to sort of like lead the viewer's eye through this piece. Um, you know, there's sort of this like S shape that sort of happens here. Um, you know, I can draw on this real quick to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Let's see, let's use like a really bright color. So here there's kind of this like shape that happens, you know, maybe the viewer starts, maybe the viewer starts here and then like kind of leads their eye to this, or maybe they read this and then it sort of creates like an S shape this way. So like thinking about shapes and like laying out your composition. So there's like a nice flow is um, sort of what you want to do. And if there's not like a flow to it, at least framing it in a way that feels, I don't know, like nice or balanced um, is sort of the way that I like to think about it. Um, so I am going to fix this piece just a little. I think it's maybe just a little large, but something like that. And I kind of like how it looks like that sheet of paper has maybe been like torn. And then even what I'll do sometimes is um, maybe just to like add to it, um, I can turn off all these layers. And then I'll like to, you know, I like to go in here and I'll like write some sort of something. I can just do like, thank you so, oh, that like barely looks like an S. Thank you so much for, and maybe it's something more like, um, maybe it's something more abstract. So it's maybe it's just thank you for all those who watch, period. And it's like, what does that mean? I don't know, but it's kind of cool and adds to the mystery of the image. Thank you to all the, for all those who watch. And then maybe here I just do my like YouTube channel or my Instagram. So Westosaurus. And then maybe just like a little smiley face. See, who knows 
what that means, but now we have a complete image. Well, almost complete. One more thing I do want to do and something I, I kind of enjoy doing is actually adding a little bit texture to the to the white. So what I'm going to do is go to this blue. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to drop it behind the blue layer and then using just um, I have like a lot of uh, textured brushes. Um, I'm just going to grab maybe like a grainy distress texture to make it like really pretty light. I'm not sure if you guys are even gonna be able to see this on camera, but I'll make the brush really big and I'll go in here and I just will kind of, you know, I'm sort of adding this like grain texture to everything and it'll just be, you know, like one quick pass just so it's not like a flat white that's happening. Uh, yeah. And so now we kind of have this like texture all around the image all right, and that's the completed collage image. If you guys are interested in making something like this, I would love for you to give it a try and please tag me whatever you create on Instagram. Be sure to follow me there. And then again, if you've created anything, um, share it, tag me in it. I would love to see it. Um, hopefully this was helpful, somewhat entertaining. Um, maybe you learned something new or just got inspired to create something of your own. But thank you so much for being here and I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Later guys.